Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are working on the free go-kart that we picked up two videos ago. Uh, but if you guys didn't see that, basically, a friend of mine told me that he wants to get rid of his go-kart. It's been sitting in his backyard for like 16 years. It was either going to be thrown out or I'll take it. So I took it off his hands. When we picked it up, we went through it. And I mean, obviously, this thing is pretty bad. The engine, we tried to get it running. It does turn over and does turn freely. Kinda, oh, there, there you can see it. But after further investigating, the valves are in fact stuck open. I'm sure if we took apart this engine, uh, you know, looped up and cleaned up all inside of there, maybe put some new valves or something in there, we could definitely get this thing running. It even needs a new carb and definitely a new gas tank and stuff like that. But I think we're gonna save that for on a rainy day and when I have all the parts uh, on hand where we can go ahead and just rebuild this thing all in one day. So with that being said, we are gonna be doing a little engine swap in this thing just to get it back up and driving once again for the first time in 16 years. And we are gonna be using a Predator 212. Uh, I've had a brand new one in box that I got like two summers ago, I think, at a yard sale for 40 bucks. It's been packed away ever since, so I mean, hopefully it's still running. I think it's like a 2013 version too, so if it hasn't ran since 2013, since factory, hopefully everything's still good. But you can see it way in there. It is on top of a ton of totes, so. Oh, this is going to take a while, so I'll catch you guys back once I get this thing out. This is going to be a job. Oh, there we go. All right, so before we go ahead and uh, take out the new engine, the reason I have the go-kart way over there instead of at the shop is because I want to hose it down first before I really start working on it because I don't know what's living in there. There's literally like a whole ecosystem starting to grow on the floorboards of this thing and between the seats and basically everywhere. So it'd be nice to get everything hosed off and uh, you know, safe to work on. check this out just using my garden hose this was able to clean up really good i mean that looks brand new well that does that rust doesn't but this is a carter go-kart you finally know what it is a hot bodies that's kind of weird but that's pretty cool it looks so vintage but i'm just gonna let this dry out for a bit and then uh once it's pretty much all dry we're rolling into the shop and begin this engine swap Alrighty guys, so the go-kart is pretty much all dry. Uh, we got this thing inside of here now. Um, I'm really hoping that we won't have to drill any new uh, engine mounts or anything. I'm hoping that we can just take off this old engine. Uh, I believe it is the same uh, shaft size. I think it's, uh, I believe it's three-fourths of an inch shaft on the Predators. Actually, I could probably just check. Yeah, right here, the shaft diameter. Yep, three-fourths of an inch. This looks three-fourths of an inch, uh, just eyeballing it. But... I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead. I'm probably going to jack it up so we can really get to those engine bolts. And I'm also really hoping that this clutch will come off. It does look uh, pretty rusted on there. But without further ado, let's get started with this engine swap. Alrighty guys, so all the engine mounts are out. I just put two of them, just like slid them back in to keep the engine from twisting when I try and take off this clutch, but this clutch is not wanting to go off. So I'm just gonna keep on trying. I'm gonna catch you guys back once I'm able to get it off. Two hours later. Alrighty guys, so what seems like two hours later, I, I just had to weld this little tiny pulley puller I had uh, to the clutch because I literally tried it about 30 times without welding it and every time it slipped off. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna just weld it. And I finally just got the pop off. I just gotta get the rest of it off. Unfortunately, I did bend it up a little bit with the uh, pry bar, but I could probably just bend it back. It's not that big of a deal. But I just gotta finish getting this off and then we can finally pull this engine out and uh, begin prepping for the new one. Come on, come on. 
Yes! Oh my gosh. That has got to be one of the best feelings I have ever had in my life. When I put the camera down before, it was still putting up a good fight, but uh, we won. So what I'm gonna do is try and just, you know, straighten out that just a little bit and uh, you know, probably start cleaning it up a little bit on the inside and all around. Then we'll go ahead and uh, unbox the new engine. I'm not gonna bother recording this, so next clip will be unboxing the fresh unit. Actually, I think before we uh, take the new engine out of the box, I think it's more appropriate if you take the old engine out first. So everything should be disconnected, all the wires and throttles and whatnot. Oh yeah. And it is out. So I'm definitely going to uh, spray some carb cleaning or something and uh, get rid of all of that nasty like grease and oil and dirt mixture. It was really gross to touch <laughs> when the bolts are all on there. But now it is time to take out the new engine. Right, so the box is actually already open, but it's been a long time since I've uh, seen this thing. Oh yeah, it's definitely the older version because the gas tank is different. This one actually looks bigger than the new ones. Okay. Oh. Nothing special, you know, 212. Let's just see if the engine still turns. All right, yeah, we're good. So I'm just gonna uh, fill this thing up with some oil and then we'll go ahead and see if the engine mounts line up. Got some nice 1030 going in there. I'm gonna spray this down, like I said, and uh, just wipe it off, get off all that nasty stuff. That's fine. So now, it's the moment of truth to see if they have the same uh, engine mounts. Oh yeah, we're looking good. Should just be able to uh, bolt this thing right in. But what I have to do before putting on the belt or the chain, matter of fact, is loosen all of these. I've never dealt with any type of system like this, but I believe I should loosen all of these, push it a little bit forward, so we have some uh, some more tension room than just that. And I do have a new chain over there. And the bolt snapped. All right, so now, as you can see, I can move this. Oh my God, that is disgusting. <laughs> Guess the underneath is still wet. I'm gonna move it up pretty close right now. And now what I'll do is I'll just uh, mount up the engine, put on the clutch, and then, you know, we'll throw on the belt and everything. And then we'll begin uh, cutting the chain, tensioning it up, running all the plumbing and wiring for, you know, throttle cable, maybe even the kill switch, because this thing does actually have one. First fuel up and then we're ready to go. is on the engine is all tightened down uh next up what we just got to do is cut the chain tension the belt and the chain and then do like the throttle cable and stuff like i said before uh but i'm just gonna cut off that little end of the uh keyway let's get that done right now so now it looks much better but it is starting to get a little bit dark out and i do have to clean up everything because i we are expecting uh, a lot of rain tomorrow which sucks but uh, i'm really happy we got the engine in in one night it took like three hours or so for everything the clutch honestly took an hour and a half at itself, so definitely could have been a lot quicker if we didn't run into that issue. But this thing looks pretty good in the back of here. Super happy how it's coming so far. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. The rain isn't too bad. I gotta figure out the whole situation because I don't want the NASCAR outside and stuff like that. But with that being said, see you all then. Alrighty guys, so we are back here the next day. Uh, the rain has been holding up for us. It poured earlier, but uh, it's holding up for us. So I really want to try and get this done so we can at least uh, give it for a uh, little test drive before it all starts to come back down. Uh, but all we really have to do is cut the chain, tension the belt and the chain, run the throttle cable and fuel it up. And that's pretty much left. Maybe do a couple heat cycles with the engine. But other than that, should be pretty much pretty good. So let's get started doing all of that. Let's crank it all out. So this thing will be driven for the first time in 16 years. Oh my God. So here's the old chain. I just put a 35 on there, just assuming that it is a 35. Underneath all this rust is a 40. Dang. So that obviously puts a little bit of a damper on this. I was not expecting this to be a 40. I mean, that's pretty big for a go-kart this size. Unfortunately, I don't have any 40 chain laying around like I do 35. There's only one place that I know that has chain uh, you know, on hand. I'm gonna see if they're open, and if they are, I'm probably just gonna go run there, but in the meantime, I am just gonna, uh, 
run this little throttle cable real quick, and then I'll give that place a uh, check. We'll do the uh, little throttle check to get some more free power out of this thing. So you guys will see how much it actually, how much farther the throttle will go now. Oh yeah. That feels good. So guys, I think right now I'm just gonna go uh, run over to the auto parts store and see if they have a 40 chain. If they do, that'd be awesome. So I'll catch you guys back once. Hopefully we have a brand new chain for this thing. So guys, I'm back from the uh, auto parts store and I don't have a new chain. Unfortunately, that is just too big of a chain uh, that he had. He had 41, 35, usual go-kart mini bike type chains. But uh, this is literally like motorcycle chain. I mean, look, at, look how thick that sprocket is. That's literally like a motorcycle. It might be the same as the NASCAR. God, I can't find any numbers on it, but it sure does look close. So even though we literally just got stopped at the last possible uh point literally on a cliffhanger right now to uh, make this thing drive that doesn't mean we can't start it up and uh you know see how this thing runs so let's go ahead roll this outside and uh get this engine its first ever start first fuel just gonna give it a couple slow pulls uh to get the uh oil inside sloshed around everywhere make sure everything's lubricated all right that should be good now here we go Oh yeah, the garage sale engine runs. So I'm just gonna let it do a uh, couple heat cycles and everything. I'm happy to see that the uh, clutch isn't catching or anything. It seems to be working properly at least so far. I could probably hit the gas a little bit and uh, see if the centrifugal force still works in the clutch and if it'll kick out and start moving this. Maybe I shouldn't because the belt's like this, but I'm sure a little throttle tap wouldn't hurt anything. And then once it's fully warmed up, I'm probably gonna tune the uh, idle just a little bit because they do come from factories, a little bit of a uh, higher idle for a mini bike or a go-kart. That's pretty good. I'm gonna hit the gas a little bit. Oh yeah, I heard the, uh, I, yep, I heard the clutch engage. It slung the uh, belt. So at least we know it works. All right, so I'm gonna cut it off real quick. I'm gonna check the oil. All right, we are all good. So all we need is the chain and uh, we are good. But anyway guys, with that being said, I'm gonna be ending off the video here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, drive this thing obviously because of that unfortunate misunderstanding of what I was thinking of a 35 chain was actually a 40 chain. So I just gotta get one of those ordered and uh, we'll be able to drive this thing for the first time. It's gonna be pretty exciting. So I guess be on the lookout for a first drive video come soon once that chain comes in. But we were able to get the engine swapped in in one night. Uh, all we did today was the throttle cable, which I could have done last night if I knew that was gonna be the last thing we were gonna do. But this engine does look pretty good on there, that's for sure. But anyway guys, follow my social medias. They will be on the outro of this video, Instagram and Snapchat I use the most. You guys have been killing it lately and I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. It's really a driving motivating factor for me. So I really do appreciate it. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and tell your friends about the channel.